Well, welcome. In this video lecture, we are looking at the book Think Python, How to Think Like a Computer Scientist. We're looking at the second edition. The authors are Alan, Jeffrey, and Chris. I'm going to be doing video lectures. My name is Arthur Solomon. I'm going to be working with you throughout these videos. Thank you. Exercise 2.2. We have three questions. Volume of a sphere with a radius r. We're going to be doing this in Python. We also have a calculation based off a of book price. Book is $24.95. We get a 40% discount. Shipping cost for our first book is separate from the shipping cost for all remaining books. We're ordering 60 books total. How do we do the calculation? Also, we're going to have a running problem based off of two different speeds or two different paces of running. The goal is to figure out what time we can get home for breakfast if we leave the house at 6.52 a.m. So that's our goal this week. All right, so for our exercise 2.2, we have three questions, volume of a sphere, and calculating with a radius of five. So we can do this a few different ways. I'm actually gonna go ahead and open up a new notepad. This is the question. And to kind of help me go along, I'm just going to go ahead and type what I'm going to be putting in to our shell. So we have pi, we have our radius, we have our formula, and we're going to go ahead and print what our sphere volume is. I've been fat fingering a lot today, so I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste. Oh, but I forgot, it doesn't like that. So with the RP value, We'll do our r value, r dot zero. We will do our formula. Volume is equal to four divided by three times pi times radius cubed. And that will mean we can do our output, our print, volume of a sphere. And that is our variable, v is our variable. Run that equation. And the volume of the sphere is that guy right there. And that is appropriate. That is the correct response. So I'm going to go ahead, copy and paste it. And that answered question number one. All right, so our next question, I'm going to go ahead and open up a new blank notepad. Again, we are looking at a book. $24.95. The store gets a 40% discount. We're shipping at $3 for the first copy, 75 cents for the additional copies. What is our total wholesale cost for 60 copies? All right, so I have a variable book price set to the book price. I have my discount. This is what I'm going to be paying. So I'm paying 60% of retail because again, I'm getting 40% off. The first uh, ship is $3. All remaining shipping is 75 cents per unit, and we have total units of 60 units. So I'm gonna go ahead, book. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and leave the comment in there. That's fine. Our shipping for our first unit, our shipping for our remaining units, our total units that sets up most of our variables our book discount amount will be our book price times our discount times how many units we have our next one will be shipping our shipping can be done several different ways here we have shipping is equal to our 59 books times our 75 cents plus the cost of our first book you could do our first book plus our remaining shipping times 59, doesn't really matter. Again, order of operations here. So that produces our results. Our results are book discount amount plus our shipping is set to our results. So we're gonna have four print uh, output statements. Our first one basically is just letting us know that this is what they're going to be. Our first one is going to be 
our price of the book. Again, this is setting our total price of the book cost. So that's going to be our 60 books at our discount rate. Next, we have our total shipping cost of $47. And here we have our total price. Total price is $945.45 roundabout. Even though they're tagged as strings, we could have done them as floats. This is a simple way of doing this problem. If we were to do this as a script, it would probably be looking a little bit better. Again, we could also change our strings to floats. That would also work numerous ways to do this. This was just one way to get through this problem. So let's go ahead. Let's minimize this. Let's look at problem number three. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and do question three. Running my house, I leave at 6.52 a.m. I run one mile at a pace of eight minutes per uh, and 15 seconds per mile. Then I run three more miles at a faster pace of seven minutes and 12 seconds per mile and I run one more easy mile what time do I get home for breakfast I'm gonna go ahead and open up a new notepad and again I'm just gonna go ahead and type out the formula start time is again 652 my easy pace is eight minutes 15 seconds my tempo is seven minutes 12 seconds. I'm doing two laps at an easy pace. I'm doing three laps at my tempo pace. My breakfast hour is my start time at 6 uh, a.m. 52 minutes. I'm going to be adding my easy time and tempo time and I'm going to be putting this in hours. So my first calculation is our time in hours. I'm going to be calculating my first and last run at an easy pace. I'm going to be calculating my fast pace. There's three of them. And again, I'm doing this in hours. I will be doing my calculation for my breakfast hour, start time, easy time, plus my tempo time, and then converting it to uh, dividing it by uh, minutes and hours. From there, I will do a, an init for my breakfast hours, making sure it is a number. From there, I'm gonna make sure that my breakfast time in minutes is appropriate. So breakfast hours minus my initial hour, times all of that by 60. My breakfast init uh, minutes is going to be, again, ensuring that my breakfast in minutes is a integer. And I'm going to end with a print statement. My breakfast is at a given time. And I'm formatting in hours and in minutes. So if I leave my house at 6.52 a.m. and I've run five miles essentially at two different speeds, I should be able to get back to my house and have breakfast at about 7.30 a.m. And that answers the question for question number three. Questions or anything? Reach out. That concludes this chapter. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out and leave me a comment or a question. I'll try to get those answered as quickly as I can. Again, thank you and I look forward to working with you in later modules.